Hello everyone and welcome to the 18th episode of The Lab. With you today is Alex Trotter, Brandon Weirig, and myself, Lou Follenkamp. Uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about uh, types of muscular contractions, we're going to talk a little bit about fiber types, and then we will also dig a little bit into uh, what is known as sliding filament theory, so basically a mus muscular contraction. Uh, so just to kind of lead it off here, we're going to talk about the three different muscular contractions. Um, so you have a concentric, isometric, and an eccentric contraction. Uh, so with a concentric, uh, let, let's just take it through bicep curl, for example. Um, you start off with that, <laughs> with Brandon Flexus' massive pipes. Uh, so starting it off when you have I didn't that... didn't see anything change. <laughs> Hoodie just ripped the seam, dude. <laughs> Uh, so starting off, concentric contraction is just simply where you apply more force than what the resistance is. So think about picking up, let's say, a 20-pound dumbbell, and you curl that up to your shoulder. Uh, you beat the weight, you brought it up to your shoulder, you create a joint movement. Uh, an isometric would be you provide enough force into that resistance, in which case nothing moves, uh, and you maintain tension throughout the muscle, and there is no joint movement. On an eccentric contraction, let's go back to, let's say that weight's right back up at your shoulder and now you are lowering it back down to the starting position where now the muscle fibers are lengthening under tension and you are controlling it. You're not just letting it drop. There's actually some effort involved in that. Uh, so, you know, let, let's talk a little bit now about the, uh, more of the science behind it all. Uh, maybe I'll even quiz these two, you never know. Uh, <laughs> oh, <what the> hell? <laughs> And that's the it on this episode. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. But we're going to go a little bit more into the, uh, the sliding filament theory of muscular contraction. Uh, so basically what that means is it's just the, the actin filaments uh, at the end of each of the sarcomeres sliding inward on the myosin filaments. Uh, basically, you could also shorten it up to do just being, being the two Z lines coming toward one another at the center of that sarcomere. Uh, that is the short and narrow of it all. Now, if you want to, we could even go into it even more in depth where you could break it down to resting phase, excitation, uh, and kind of the start of the contraction, the contraction phase, and then following it up into a relaxation. Uh, so what, let's go to Brandon here. Yeah, what's up? Brandon, what happens within those sarcomeres, between those, those actin and myosin, you know, strains? What's going on? Um, actin and myosin, they'll actually hook onto each other, and that's what, when they start hooking and they'll pull, that's what contracts the muscle, and that's what brings them, um, Z lines closer together. Um, so, like, if you look about, like, so that's why the eccentric phase of a lift is the most, uh, brutal on the body. Like, literally, when you're trying to go down slow, those two actin and myosin are literally, like, at the micro level, or, like, little atomic bombs going off as they just basically just break off. And that's what causes such great um, damage. Um, there's a couple things that... So, in um, other words, that's going to make you sore. Yeah. More sore. The eccentric portion yes. of the lift. Bingo. And then, um, like, the more reps... I mean, that requires a lot for them, too, to do that. You have to have a lot of uh, calcium in the body and a lot of um, ATP, crinacin, okay. so which is why creatine is a really good um, supplement for what, people. What is ATP, Brandon? It's just a fast, explosive energy source. Yes. Adenosine triphosphate. Big words. Big scientific words. Let the doctor stick with those big words. <laughs> We're just the looks at the end of the day. I mean, you are pretty, but I mean, don't quit your day job. So I'm told. <laughs> My stuff. Uh, so. Which is you... also very uh, small detail. I mean, this, you could. You could break that down. There's a whole books about this stuff. I was going to say, we're going into the short and narrow list today. If you want to need even in, like, more in depth, we could post some old slides I think I still have from Yeah, school. I mean, you got to have calcium binding with protein molecules to convert to other molecules that all this stuff has to happen for that stuff to happen. And it's We could even break it down even further and go into, like, motor unit recruitment mm -hmm. when the charge reaches what happens at the like the sarcoplasmic reticulum all or none principle it's just uh, we, we can have way more fun with this it's we won't today we won't today uh but now this will probably be a little bit more of a shorter episode guys uh so then let's kind of move on from there so that's kind of the short and narrow of the you know the sliding filament theory uh 
you know, you could even go, like, when you have a muscle under fatigue and you're unable to generate a contraction, uh, that's when you really want to start looking into, you know, your diet, your, your sleep, and your hydration. You know, if you're not providing the necessary fuel in order to continue and maintain contractions or sustain multiple contractions, uh, that's when you're going to start seeing, I think Trotter's mentioned in the past, like that shaking, the inability to kind of control it. Uh, and then basically you, you can't move as well as you probably should. Uh, but let's move on. We'll kind of go into a little bit more about fiber types here. So the, the short version of this is that you have fast twitch and you have slow twitch fibers. Now, everyone's makeup might be a little different. Um, we actually had someone, well, AJ had done that wonderful 23 and me, and he kind of found out, you know, maybe a little bit more about what he's made up of. Um, but when you have more of those fast twitch or like, you know, the type two fibers, uh, there's actually two different, just the two for right now. I think they were trying to even classify it further again. Um, we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, but the type 2 fibers for more of a fast twitch, and you have type 1 fibers for more of a slow twitch. Now, I've always been taught that, you know, the type 1 fibers working as more of, like, those deeper stabilizing muscles, and then the fast twitch on more of, like, power generators. Um, so, like, think about, like, your soleus relative to your gastrocnemius, or your teres major relative to your latissimus dorsi. Like, th there might be a little bit of a makeup between those two, but at the end of the day... Um, you know, who you're, actually, I think it's more of your mother. You get more of your genetic makeup in regards to the muscular system from your mother. I don't know if you guys have heard that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always heard about the hair. It's on, it comes from your mom's side. Yeah. But no idea about anything else. I'll have to find that. I'll have to find that old note. I remember I wrote that down because I, I wanted to look into that further. But I heard that back in college when I was going through my, my strength conditioning course that we, like, if you want to look at how good of an athlete you're going to be, look at your mom. Like, if you want to know how explosive you're going to be, so if you had, like, like, my mom played softball and volleyball, she was tenacious. So, like, didn't transfer to me, that's for sure. But, true. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Affirmation. <laughs> Affirmation. <laughs> no. Uh, but then, going into some more of the, the different fiber types, you could even look at, uh, you know, athletic builds, you know, family-wise, generational-wise. Has your family always been you know, long distance runners, or have they been like product? Product, your dad was more in bodybuilding. Right? Yeah. And then now you're in powerlifting. So like, yeah. clearly something's working there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they were just, they were just both athletes. It's just, we just chose like our different, uh, principles, I guess. Makes sense. So in terms of like, what have you learned in terms of fiber type differences as well, besides just like fast and slow twitch? Uh, um, you kind of get more into the to the hybrids. You know, like your to make it even bigger. You got like your type two X and your type two X A's and kind of things like that. To where I think a good runner, a good example of that would be a as like a an eight hundred runner, mm -hmm. someone you got to have power and you got to be explosive, but you got to be able to sustain that power for when you're starting to push that oxidative system. Yeah, um, it's kind of pretty easy to tell what fiber type somebody is. Like you get these cost country runners that come in here and start lifting weights and it's like the first rep is just as much of a struggle as maybe like their eighth rep yeah to where like you get a powerful guy i mean they'll bang out the first four or five reps and all of a sudden you just watch it just hit the yeah. fan quick <laughs> so it's pretty um, easy you can tell that pretty quick um which fiber type certain kids are you can even tell by just kind of way they're built you know i mean type twos are kind of they're more uh, muscular lean yeah and then I guess type 1 you just they're kind of more like a, just a stick figure in mm -hmm. a sense to not to be too mean but yeah. you are what you look yeah now you guys ever heard like the, the, the theory that your training can also modify your twitch yeah it's, it's super like easy to go from type 2 to type 1 but it is incredibly hard to be a type 1 go to type 2 yeah it can be done and it, it, but it's I mean it is what it is it's, it's challenging yeah I mean, I definitely think that there's some, like, genetic aspect to that where, like, you have the capacity for that, but at the same time, I think there's there's a lot of effort that, like, that's not going to be an overnight thing. No. no. That's going to take months, if not years of training yeah. just for that. Uh, in terms of, um, we'll, we'll save this for another episode, but maybe one day we'll go through uh, uh, motor unit recruitment and we can talk a little bit about the different types of contractions or even, like, um, 
how that can be influenced greatly by the big three that we've already talked about, like the sleeping, the eating, and the hydrating. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I'll, I'll probably post a little bit of a, probably one of the pages from uh, the NSCA Strength and Conditioning book uh, on fiber types um, on the page here soon. But if you guys have any questions on that, you know, reach out. Um, we'll go through that together. Uh, but we will see you guys next time.